Hey guys, yes, I am back this week. It's not Jody, so prepare your hate fingers for commenting. All right, if you got that out of your system, good. Now let's get on with the autoguide.com weekly news roundup. This week we have some new spy photos to show you of the interior of the upcoming Toyota Supra. Jaguar has an interesting patent which it has just filed. And finally, just today, Subaru's STI brand released some new cars and let me tell you about them. The first model is the new BRZ TS, which receives a whole host of upgrades to make it faster around corners, although unfortunately nothing is done to the powertrain in that car, while the second car is the new WRX STI Type RA. Unlike the BRZ, this Type RA actually does get a power boost thanks to a new cold air intake and a high flow exhaust system. With those upgrades along with a retuned ECU, this 2.5 liter turbocharged boxer engine makes 310 horsepower, just a five horsepower increase compared to the standard STI. Just like the regular STI, the engine will come exclusively paired to a six speed manual gearbox. It uses a carbon fiber roof panel, a carbon fiber rear wing, and the trunk mounted spare has even been stripped out of this car to help save weight. Only 500 units will be built of this Type RA model, and same goes for that BRZ TS. So yes, as I mentioned, there is no turbocharger for this new BRZ TS, something that we were all hoping for. It still uses the same 2 liter 4 cylinder that makes 205 horsepower. The big changes to this car come underneath as it receives a new set of dampers and coil springs, flexible V braces in the engine compartment, a stiffer chassis and a stiffer subframe. Sticky Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires wrapped around 18 inch wheels will provide the traction while there is an entire body kit which will help with aerodynamics. Both of these new models from STI will go on sale in the first quarter of 2018. We have another fresh set of spy photos to show you of the new Supra, and don't look now Toyota, but your BMW is showing. These shots taken through a window clearly show a BMW shifter for an automatic transmission, the same knob used on BMW's iDrive infotainment system, and even the steering wheel appears to be from the new BMW Z4, although we can see a Toyota badge right in the middle of that steering wheel, however it has been covered up with some black tape. For those wondering why this is, well it's because Toyota and BMW teamed up to put together this new sports car. Now from the German automaker, you're going to get the new Z4, which is going to be a soft top convertible only, while from Toyota, we're going to get the new Supra, which is going to be a hard top coupe only. Now when it goes to production, there is a chance that the interior of this Supra will change, but I kind of doubt it. It actually makes sense. The reason these automakers team up on sports cars is to save money, and doing it this way, sharing parts, that saves money. Now the biggest mystery for this new Supra is what will provide the power. Now a turbocharged inline six cylinder from BMW is definitely a possibility, while a hybrid system from Toyota has been talked about and we're not sure if they will marry the two or if it'll be a different engine. Like I said, right now it is still a mystery. Now in the BMW, we have seen a six speed manual gearbox. However, here in the Supra, we haven't seen any traces of a manual yet. So we're still not sure what the transmission will be in this Toyota. That new Z4 is expected to show up this September at the Frankfurt Motor Show, so you can watch that debut to get some hints about the Supra, but we're actually expecting to see the Supra sometime in 2018 as a 2019 model. Thanks to info found in a patent filing, we now know that there is another automaker looking into active aerodynamics, Jaguar Land Rover. The patent was recently filed in the UK and it describes a vehicle aerodynamic apparatus. Now it's quite different than what we have seen from other automakers, so let me explain. Unlike other brands like Chevy that are using active aerodynamics to help their cars go fast around the racetrack, Jaguar Land Rover wants to use active aero to make its cars more efficient. Now Jaguar explains that the rear facing surfaces on a car can account for up to 30% of its total drag. Now to normally combat this, you would use a process called boat tailing, which essentially sees the rear end of the car taper inwards, both horizontally and vertically. 
Now sure you can use the technique, but Jaguar says that not all of its cars really match with that styling. So they've found a way around it and it's using active aerodynamics. If you look at these patent photos, it includes a number of movable body parts around the rear end of the vehicle. So again, essentially while the vehicle is moving, the whole rear end can kind of taper in a little bit and just make it that much more aerodynamic, helping to save on fuel. The application explains that besides movable body parts, the cars will also use air inlet openings and different types of vertical fins to help divert the air. So this patent is clearly focused on fuel economy, but like I said off the top, a lot of other automakers are using active aero to help their cars go faster on the racetrack, and it only makes sense that eventually Jaguar will put some of this technology on the F-Type. Active Aero is definitely in right now with all sorts of brands researching it to see how it can benefit them. Now the only real bad news about the Jaguar Land Rover system is that the company has confirmed it will not go into production for a long time. For everyone out there crazy about the Demon, Dodge has released some new kind of nitty gritty details on how the car comes together. First of all, if you're worried that that new 6.2 liter supercharged V8 making up to 840 horsepower can't take the punishment, think again. Every single one of these engines is dyno tested for 42 minutes under a load of 5,200 RPM before they're shipped off from the company's assembly plant in Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Now Dodge says that 62% of the Demon's engine is actually different than a Hellcat. This car gets some real special treatment. New parts compared to the Hellcat include the crankshaft, pistons, connecting rods, and the supercharger. Now Dodge also says that there is a 33% increase in oiling for the valve springs and rocker tips, while single groove collets on the valve stems improve stability. Fuel injector pressure has been cranked up by 27%, while both the oil pan and windage tray have been tested at 1.8 Gs to make sure they can handle the high acceleration. But if you're not really into all those technical specs, let me run a few more relatable numbers by you. For example, during a quarter mile run, the Demon ingests 173 cubic feet of air, which is the equivalent to the lung capacity of 816 humans. That means that if the air was coming from inside the car, 800 feet into that quarter mile run, there would be nothing left to breathe inside your Demon. Now here's another fun fact about the engine's cooling system. Dodge says that the heat rejected is equal to that of 250 electric toasters. And to create all of that heat, this engine can burn 1.36 gallons of high octane fuel per minute. If you're looking to bring one of these numbers bending demons home with you, it's gonna cost you at least $86,000 and deliveries start this fall, so you better start saving. After seeing multiple high-performance Hyundai Veloster concepts over the last few years, we finally have spy photos to prove that a new high-performance Hyundai Veloster is coming. This high-performance Veloster will be coming from Hyundai's new N Performance brand, and it will likely be the first N car that comes to North America. Now the true nature of this Veloster is revealed by those two massive rear exhaust pipes sticking out of the back of this prototype, while you can also see a chin spoiler up front and it looks like there's a big spoiler out back. Low profile tires that are wrapped around what look like 19 inch wheels are also seen, while that set of red brake calipers, which is just so you know, the international sign for increased performance, provide the stopping power. At this point, we don't know what the engine will be in this car, but we do have one clue. Now, the last time we saw one of these Veloster concepts, which was called the RN30 concept, that car used a two liter engine with an electric turbocharger to make 295 horsepower. So if the production version of this Veloster N actually makes 295 horsepower, this car is going to be a legitimate contender with things like the Volkswagen Golf R and the Ford Focus RS, except for that the Hyundai will almost certainly cost less. And this week we leave you with a new video of something that has happened many, many times before. 
someone got a little too excited on Germany's most famous racetrack.